Jolun Drew Centurions, and welcome back to another episode of Star Trek Command, or I Press Plus Mode. I'm Ad Commodore Tirek of the Dreadnought Arius Ordus. As we continue our campaign against the Hydran Star Kingdom, and last time, well, we picked up a brand new light Dreadnought, which we will now bring into enemy space to annihilate. You may have also seen that we're now in the neutral zone between the Klingon Star Empire and the Federation, and that is because, unfortunately, our heavy cruiser has exploded. Now, it has been suggested that we bring a starbase with us this time, bring our own sort of weapons, as it were. Now, the first time we came over here, we kind of didn't have the cash to do that but now we're sort of sitting in a much more comfortable position but i'm not quite sure that those star bases actually exist although maybe they're one of these sbhei no no these are all star hawks unfortunately i'm not quite sure what the star bases are named for the Rymans, but we are fairly close to actually being able to steal a planet at this time so we're probably just not going to waste the time trying to set up another star base somewhere in friendly territory once we actually build it so without further ado let us quickly check to make sure that we are fully kitted out we are indeed and we shall set out into space and see if we can't just sprint over to hydrant lines the goal will be will be to avoid combat as much as possible until we're back in hydrant space and lo and behold right before we make it into Hydran space, we get assaulted by an anomaly or an asteroid base assault. Let's do the asteroid base assault because anomalies are an absolute major pain and tend to cause you a lot of damage. And since we're going to be operating so far from home, that's not exactly something we want to have happening. Already, we are once again in our excellent little light dreadnought. The light dreadnought was definitely a standout star of the last Rymulan season. It was a vessel that we were in for quite some time. Proved to be incredibly effective. Very useful in many ways. Partially because it also carried a pair of pseudo frigates which can carry a ton of plasma torpedoes but also because it was maneuverable it was nimble it could get in on top of you and had a plasma r to do it with so uh, having a single s2fs and a single r not exactly the most titanic armament and eventually i believe there's a version of this that has two r's but this should hopefully do for now. At least that's the hope, especially squaring off against a single little tiny frigate. Uh, let's just make sure our setups are good. Yep, that fear is fine. So let's set up to enveloping mode. That'll take a little bit more power to actually get our plasma torpedoes to maximum damage. And then we'll buff up the forward shield with all additional power. This tells us, though, that we are able of maneuvering quite quickly, even without... Uh, quite quickly while charging weapons. It's also more maneuverable than your average Dreadnought, which gives us a little bit of an advantage when it actually comes to full-on battles, especially because positioning is everything when it comes to plasma torpedoes. I think we need to slow down a little bit, unfortunately. I'm going to increase the speed of time as we sort of wallow back and forth. We want to get our plasma torpedoes fully charged and ready to rock. So let's start turning in on him. A plasma... Oop, wrong button. Wanted to slow down the speed of time. Plasma torpedoes just about ready to come online. Long range phaser fire coming our way. Looks like this guy is a whole bunch of Gatlings. So we kind of want to keep him at a little bit of a distance here. Fire our plasmas. Oh my goodness, that was rather astonishing. The amount of firepower that he just put out. We got a little bit more plasma torpedo just for him. If, as long as we hold him. He, okay. Whew. Yeah, his point blank range firepower was absolutely amazing. I got to give credit where credit's due. That is one heck of a gunboat. I'm honest to God, very much impressed by what that just was able to do. Hopefully, we won't have to worry about that again for a while. <laughs> Alright, we got long range plasma or er, long range phaser four fire intercepting us at the moment, but we should be doing just fine as we'll cruise on over. And we can, if we want, just set up it sort of like a long range and barrage with our plasma R. The range on the plasma R is really good for what we can do with it, so if need be, we can sit back and siege. But obviously, we want to get nice, close, and personal and barrage. Now, in terms of overall firepower, we've definitely gone up. We went from two S's and two F's to, two, to a single S and an R and two F's. So, obviously, we've picked up 20 damage somewhere along the line. Uh, it does cost us a lot more power, but we are a much larger ship with a lot more power to burn. This also means we have a lot more defensive power. Because we have a larger power generation, we are able to put more power into the shields. So, let's start slowing down and uh, prepare for just a long range drive. We have 36 points of power into the forward shield. That should be enough with any luck. And uh, I hope to barrage him without having to worry about too much trouble. Actually, we should cloak. Takes a lot of power to cloak this ship. However, once we get within range, we should be able to open fire with all of our weaponry. And that is, of course, the goal. The more weapons we can fire, the better. So he is not shooting back at me at the moment, which is a little bit odd. I would expect him to just continue to blast away at my ship, especially because I'd like him to, you know, not be smart and effective. So we'll slow down to a full-on stop. He fired, so we'll come out of cloak and fire all the plasma and dick back in the cloak. Safe and sound, we've just dealt 160 damage to him. Not bad at all so far as we take a little bit of light return fire, but we have 10.5 points of power in the forward shield. We can handle it. In fact, I'm going to get a little bit closer. We actually spend 
1.3 points of power in order to actually move this stuff. We are almost a heavy cruiser in terms of maneuverability. Well, in terms of engine power, not necessarily maneuverability. Although we are more nimble than your average ship. The Romulans, not quite as good as the Klingons, to be sure, but definitely have a little bit of nimbleness going on with their fleet designs. Another nice big salvo, another 160 damage, tearing off systems left, right, and center. We've destroyed two of his point defense phaser systems, and his phaser four apparently needed a little bit of repairs as we dealt damage to that, which is excellent. A wonderful way to start the day, because we want to be able to basically kill them without having to worry about anything. We do still have to travel up half of the... Uh, half of the Hydran Star Kingdom in order to actually get to the one location where the enemy actually is. But once we conclude that journey, we'll be fine. There we go. So the speed is normal, and we can decloak because we've successfully destroyed the asteroid starbase, thus securing our hold in the sector. I assume, anyway. I mean, maybe it was a defensive mission, but I don't really think so. We'll find out shortly. So now that we have successfully attacked and destroyed this, we can now move on to the next of the targets. 104 percent that's it? Wow. We did take more territory, which, you know, is always great to have more. And we'll skip on over here because I don't feel like blasting through all that. We already got some work underway on this tile here. Yes, their Empire Defense is down to 14, so a couple of good missions, like surprises reversed, will mean that we will have ultimate victory. And once we have ultimate victory, then we will hopefully hold the tile. But we do oh, want to avoid those base assaults. Course. Holy goodness, that is not what we normally run into on these things. That right there is your full-on everyday heavy cruiser, which uh, normally, once we start doing a whole bunch of surprise reverses, it ends up being that the enemy just doesn't have anything worth surprising and reversing. How much speed can I actually generate? Uh, 1.2 or 7.2. Increase the forward shield, I believe. Yep, they have detected us and are charging up. Now, we have tried in the past to basically go in with as much power as we can. Uh, by, not as much power as we can, but by sprinting as under cloak to try and get over there. That doesn't work either. Like, we've tried it. So, there is no way to avoid them detecting us. Apparently, I'm Ante Tribune. I think you'll find that I'm actually a cor Commodore, sir, and I intend for you to treat me as my rank determines. Let's increase our speed even more. And don't have quite enough power to go full speed on this one. Although, if we weren't overloading the plasma torpedoes, we absolutely would. Now, we do have a pair of pseudo frigates, which we are going to be using because we need to destroy these ships fairly quickly. They are quite deadly to us, despite the fact that we have a collecting device, as we demonstrated in the Merak versus Rymelin campaign. Now, to be fair, we're a little bit smarter than that, but still, need to keep that in mind. Uh, let's go ahead and deploy in attack mode over here. Starting. The fun thing about this is even if they have AMDs, they won't actually be able to shoot at my uh, pseudo frigates because they're too big to be targeted by such things. Okay, we're going to sort of slow down a lot because I kind of want to be able to nail this guy with a whole bunch of plasma fire. And that's not looking likely at this point. In fact, if I don't, like, stop now... Emergency stop. We have no weapons aside from our plasma torpedoes. A crash stop here is not the end of the world. Guys, don't shoot my target. My target is for me. But thank you for soaking up his weapons, I suppose. The rest of the plasma. Let's see if he actually dies. He did. Okay, lovely. Now pick up the base as soon as, you know, engines are repaired and ready to go. We have deployed our little tiny CENLs. They are equipped with no less than five plasma torpedoes. Now, technically... Uh, I have been told that these CENLs in tabletop can not actually recharge their plasma torpedoes. What they're given are basically, what, what was the cryostasis plasma or time stasis plasma? Basically plasma held in a stasis field, so it becomes basically like a missile. So they can carry five plasma torpedoes and fire five plasma torpedoes, but they can't recharge them, which is one of the reasons why they're not as effective as the more modern ones that will be coming out in the next few decades, actually increase the speed of the ship and start coming in for this guy as quick as we can. We've only got phases at this moment, but maybe we'll be able to cause enough damage. So we will be sh switching over to Shrikes, obviously, as soon as we can. Shrikes being much, much more effective. Did you destroy one of them? Lovely. Uh, so on the speed of time wire. While I give them orders to go after somebody else, they did. Five Plasma F torpedoes is nothing to sneeze at, and they are quite powerful when utilized properly. We give them attack orders on that one. And I intend to fire my app firing phasers, if I have any. There we go. Get a little bit more firepower going down. I'd like to avoid having to use my plasma torpedoes, because I'd like to use my plasma torpedoes to wipe out the last one. They're being very, very deadly. I'm very happy to see that. Yep, one of them's activated. Which one? Is it the far one? Uh, can I just kill you before I have to worry about the other one? Okay, slow down the speed time. 
I'm going to call back my CENLs, mainly because I can't, you know, get any more. Wait, which is the- oh, it was the one they were attacking. Beautiful job, guys. Alright, so we've basically handled all this. I'm going to call my uh, pseudo frigates home before they actually take any damage. So I can keep things nice and safe. We got the one immediately. You need to start turning to come back home. And you'll notice that they are little tiny warbirds. Which is always a little bit amusing to me. Uh, when we come up with uh, the TNG mod version of them, I'm going to have to come up with something creative to use for them. Maybe they, we have those fighters from Nemesis. Maybe those will actually exist somewhere in a file that I have. Lovely. So a surprise reverse successful, both in reducing the enemy control over the area and pushing the Marak a little bit back. We don't want to have to deal with them after all. So our Light Dreadnought doing probably exactly what it was designed to do, raiding and screwing with people. And a surprise reverse is exactly what that is. So Empire Defense is down to nine. Ah oh, no, not another one. I can forfeit this because I don't actually have any ships to lose, so it can't penalize me for it. Ah oh, darn it. Darn it, we're trying to avoid these guys. We're really trying to avoid these. If I have to, I'm going to have to go back home. Nobody wants to do that. Okay, we got a full-on Dreadnought. Luckily for us, we have the C5 Fury. It is an LGE Plasma Torpedoes. Please set them to enveloping mode. And uh, let's see how much speed I can get, because I keep not actually checking how fast the ship is actually capable of going while charging all weapons in overloaded plasma mode. We're going to, of course, hide behind the C5. I don't know what sort of defenses this is going to be, but oh, that's so frustrating. The fact that we're going to be destroying it. I assume we're going to destroy it. I mean, there is, of course, the option that we fail. But assuming we don't fail, then destroying that is just going to be so irritating. Because then we're going to have to find another little sort of border station. And by that point, we're probably going to be on the northern end of the Hydrant Star Kingdom. <laughs> no, 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 no. You can go first. You can go first. We're capable of making a speed of 23 while charging all weapons. Is that right? Holy crap, we're quick. I mean, I suppose we are a light dreadnought, so we don't have nearly as many heavy weapons, but still, that is ridiculous. Ridiculous in a wonderful, wonderful, fiery plasma UA. Okay, start to slow down. Let's get some forward shield reinforcement going on. Let's also get a little bit of electronic warfare. I'd like to start screwing with him. Go with uh, four points of power. So I am going to get in close to him, and I am going to mess with him quite nicely. At least I'd like to. Okay, buddy. Stop. In the name of love. There goes his crash stop. Start to slow down. And we can't hit him with the tractor beam. We'll pull away. But that's okay. Actually, no, we're going to increase the speed a little bit. So here's my plan. We're going to start pulling away. And I need the tractor beam to off, please. Because I don't want to start dragging him. Once he starts to accelerate, though. Phases have taken care of that. He started to accelerate. High energy there. Because you'll notice that despite the fact we're like Dreadnought, we have a 100% chance of making this happen. Which is hilarious. And he's already hit maximum speed. So he no longer is covered by the Wild Weasel. We get the Plasma on in there. Strips out most of his shields. Get the phasers in. What few phasers we have. Although, to be fair, our phasers did wipe out his fighter group. So there is that going for him. We've quite badly damaged already his aft of Gatling phaser. So that will allow us to sort of pull away from him fairly safely, actually. And we really should be using a lot more of our speed. Because we have it. We may as well, you know, utilize it. A little bit more light phaser fire. Yeah, the Zenith is just basically in a really nasty position of getting barraged to death. Because unless he's got enough tractor beams to handle this, he's probably going to die. He's traveling fast enough to... Oh, no, he's not quite traveling fast enough to run away from him. Grabbed one, grabbed two, grabbed three. And now he shot... He has only one left. We'll get within a range of five and execute a phaser run on him. Although, phaser run in this ship, not exactly the most stunning thing ever. We could try and get in there using our nuclear space mine. I mean, he is getting quite badly damaged, but I don't think that will be necessary. Fire the phasers. A couple of affine ones. We really have such limited phaser firepower. The way that the Romulans work is they bring lots of plasma torpedoes to the fight. And plasma torpedoes can do a ton of damage if utilized effect in the right ways, which, you know, we do. The only trouble with that is... Oh, that's a bit is if you don't have the plasmas hitting targets, your phaser backup is trash. I mean, we've got seven phaser ones and th two phaser threes. We have less phaser ones than most heavy cruisers. Like, except for the most base early Federation heavy cruiser, the entire Federation heavy cruiser line, I do believe, carries at least eight phaser ones. So the Zenith has been defeated. Now we can increase the speed of time and start trying to hunt down that starbase. I do believe that our friend the Fury will lead us in the right direction as we recharge our weapon systems. Increase the speed, we may as well go max. Just full maximum power up to a speed of 31. We are enveloping all the plasma torpedo, right? Okay. There it is, the starbase. Probe, 
How well equipped are you? Stop shooting me, please. Stop shooting me. <laughs> oh God, that's a nightmare. Start to slow down. All right, the, the biggest nightmare problem, obviously, is the fact that it is just equipped with a billion and ten hellbores, which is not going to be fun to deal with at all. On top of that, it's got a whole ton of phaser force. And did I mention that it can also basically ignore plasma torpedoes because of the number of shuttles that it has? Yeah, this is just not going to be fun. I do have some concerns we're not going to make it. I'm not going to use my CENLs because I want my Centurions to survive. Because if we lose them, then... I can't replace them. Oh god, the fighters are just butchering him. Alright, prepare to fire the Plasma S. Oh, he's dead. <laughs> We're gone. We're gone. See you next week. No. Uh, not gonna happen. We came. We saw. We ran away. Cap shield reinforcement, please. Mine. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, we, we came. We saw. We left. Uh, I'm not... No. With how quickly it annihilated that Dreadnought, we could not take him. So, on the one hand, the Starbase remains, which means we'll be able to steal it. On the other hand, it did now get defended, which is obviously not great. Yeah, that's just too much firepower for us to take. We would need at least a King Condor to handle that. Well, maybe not. There could be several things we could do to try and do that. If I had a little bit better of a hold on territory around here, I would actually maybe give that a try. But, barring the fact that we didn't have a starbase at home that we could bring with us, and we don't have a starbase around here to use, uh, yeah, we don't exactly have much to work with on that one. Oh, crap, shouldn't have gone there. Because it generally spawns planetary assaults, and it did. But luckily, there's an MET-10 patrol we can take instead. So we are trying to avoid super heavy action, because super heavy action is liable to get us killed, and we'd like to avoid that if at all possible. Alright, red alert, overload all the weapon systems, let's get this sucker rolling. And rolling hard. Speed, a little bit more speed, some more speed right there. And increase the speed of time. Oh, we are so fast. We're a dreadnought and we travel at a speed of 23. It's beautiful. Reinforce the forward shield. So we're apparently facing more hydrants, which is not great. Are you another LGE? Because I can work with that. No, you're a paladin. You're a paladin plus two. That could be a little bit difficult. And you brought a friend. That's, that's even worse. Okay, so here's my plan. We're going to start slowing down the speed of everything. And you know what? I think we're going to utilize a standard tactic that we used to utilize a lot, and then we stopped doing it because, well, we didn't need to. So we're going to fire the pseudoplasma torpedoes from a range of 20 just to see if I can make it work, and then we're going to immediately break off to starboard. Now, why are we doing this? We're doing this to give us time. Also, we'll probably need to sneak underneath his fighters. Are you going to react to this? You are. Okay, lovely. So he fired everything, and then he fired everything, and are you under... Right, so now we cloak and turn, because these fighters are actually going to get in our way, they're going to shoot at us, but we're planning our maneuvers in such a way that these fighters will pass over us, or rather we'll pass under them, and then we'll come out of cloak and fire everything we've got. Fire everything you got, that's everything you got, come to cloak, plasma torpedoes prepared, and engage, at, ooh, almost, almost, fire everything, and under cloak. And that is exactly what the plan was. Okay, lovely. Plasma torpedo set up to normal mode. We don't need the, well, we'd like the additional power of enveloping, not gonna lie. That's a big mine, by the way. So you don't wanna be near that. Uh, specifically us, we would like to not be on that when it explodes. I think he realizes that it's a nuclear space mine based on the way that he immediately pulled away. So, uh, obviously shooting the fighters was not ideal. I probably should have shut that off, but it should be all right for now. Do we, are we actually charging every- we are actually charging all of our plasma torpedoes, that is lovely. So here's the fun thing. Uh, these fighters can't touch us as long as we're under cloak. And now he's been engaged. Lovely. We're gonna increase the speed of time, we're gonna skulk under cloak. Yes, this is exactly what the plan was. And it worked out beautifully. So going underneath the fighter cover and also, you know, doing the little juke maneuver was uh, something that we came up with a long time ago, back when we were in Season 8, I believe, when the Romulans destroyed the Federation. It proved to be incredibly effective. Uh, just based purely on the amount of firepower that we were... Okay, I want to fully kill this guy. I've already committed to this, so I may as well. I've got one more Phaser 1. And... got him. Okay, so his fighters are dead. And he is now vulnerable. Mainly because we've already opened him up quite heavily with our plasma torpedoes. 
And now he's been bombing him, and we've taken out his fighters. We had a little juke maneuver to buy us some time to get us the right position. Uh, that was something that we came up with mainly in the light dreadnoughts in the previous uh, previous time we had done this. Now, I don't believe I have... No, I do not have another Pseudoplasma Torpedo. But I, well, I do have two Fs, which he may or may not react to. He did! Okay. So we'll du duck back under Cloak. Let him react to that and be vulnerable. With any luck, this guy will actually shoot at that. So one other way that we could use this is we could... Um, we could use higher energy turns to rip back onto the right course. I don't think that's going to be necessary. And as long as these two just keep duking it out with each other, I'm a fairly happy camper. Okay, come out of the book. Oh, no, don't shoot at me. You don't want to shoot me. Oh, not yet, not yet. Oh, we came out of cloak too early. We've departed from cloak too soon. Cloak. Oh, we are going to get flash cubed on this one, which is not great. Actually, no, we're not. If he runs us over, we will. But if they avoid that... No, we got flash cubed. So getting hit with the mine reveals us from Cloak, which then allows everybody to shoot at us as per normal, which obviously is not great. So the, yeah, the Perseverance has taken a tremendous hit so far. We've done an excellent amount of damage to him. I don't think the little guy has the Rift Cutter. Yeah, he's in a much better... He's also packing Phaser X's. What is this? What is this insanity? Plasma torpedoes slowly charging. We did not fire one of our Plasma F torpedoes, which did reduce the firepower onto the enemy by a fairly considerable amount, but that's a reasonable trade considering we got back under Cloak fairly quickly. Although the mines afterwards did sort of take away some of that advantage, but still, not bad. We're going to start maneuvering away as quickly as we can. How much power do I got? I've got quite a bit, actually. I've got tons, because I've also got a whole bunch of power currently tied up in my Electronic Warfare Suite. We are capable of zipping along quite quickly while under cloak in normal mode. So he's mostly dead. In fact, he's going to die very soon. So my new plan, of course, is to therefore... Oh, he's dead. Come on, cloak. Tractor beam active. We're going to tractor anchor this guy. So instead of utilizing strategies of cunning and skill, we'll go just full brutal on him. Because I think we can do it. I think I have a sufficient amount of forward shield firepower to handle this. He may fire a whole bunch of missiles at me, which would actually be our main weakness. But I should have enough in terms of phaser and tractor defense to be able to handle all that. Nuclear space mine's gone off. Tractor apparently has failed. Okay. Um. Fire a plasma torpedo. Fire phasers. Let's just break him. A little bit more fire coming into him. Oh, his shuttle bay's dead. <laughs> you don't say. Get me out through distance. We've got the distance. And let's bring it around. You're done for, sir. Yeah. Single retaliatory missile in response. Oh, this light dreadnought. It's so nimble. It's so quick. It's so powerful. In the right circumstances. And being able to get those two to fight out for each other was just excellent. All right, so a beautiful mission executed there as we continue sort of skirmishing with this one star base up here. If we traveled further north, it would probably be easier, but we're so close at this point. Also, you know, we almost have a planet over here. But that's going to do it for today's episode. I've been Tarek. If you like what you've been seeing, hit that like button and subscribe before I receive a notification every time I post one of these videos. Press that little bell icon, leave a comment, share the video, and I will see you all in the next episode.